Hey, I'm in my entryway. A little while ago I did some tiling here. Uh, you, you may know that tiles come in all kinds of shapes and sizes, but the uh, most common shape is a square. Now that tile right there is one foot by one foot, one foot square. You can also get tiles that come in sheets like this to make them easier to lay out. That's This is what I used on the stairs here. This is a sheet of 36 tiles here, 36 individual tiles, arranged as a square, as a perfect square. 36 is a perfect square, because you can arrange them as a square. If I had this, that's not a perfect square. That's 30 tiles. It's not a perfect square, because it's five by six, but that's a perfect square. 36 tiles here, the side length is six, both directions. The side length being six, you say that six is the square root of 36, because it's the length of the side when you arrange it as a square. If I uh, do some flipping here really quickly, maybe I can't, maybe it's not gonna work. I thought it might work, but it won't. There we go, let's pretend that's <laughs> that we can only see 25 there. There's 25 tiles. The side length is five there. 25 is a perfect square as well. And I could continue to do that, make smaller and smaller squares, or bigger and bigger squares. So we're gonna look now at perfect squares and square roots, relationships between them, and how you can find one from the other. Oh, hello. Uh, I'm not playing with blocks. Uh, I just wanted to take this opportunity to look at squares and square roots a little bit more here with these. I was trying to fold those tiles on the staircase. That was kind of tough. This, however, I can, uh, I can move them around pretty easily here. So, we talked about perfect squares and we had the number 36. Now, I'm not going to arrange 36 tiles here because it'll take a little while, but I'm going to I'm going to make a couple smaller perfect squares. If I take uh, if I take a number of tiles here, and we have nine. Nine is good actually because it's a perfect square. I can arrange them a lot of different ways. I can arrange them in a line, but nine happens to be one where I can arrange it as a perfect square. Nine's a perfect square. Eight's not a perfect square. If I only have eight, there's no way to arrange eight as a square. Right, I can do that. I can move these ones over here. I can make it four by two or two by four. That's a rectangle, but it's not a square. If I have seven, well, it's hard to even make a rectangle unless you make a rectangle that's one by seven there. Six, six isn't a perfect square. Neither is five. Four is a perfect square, right? Because I can have, I can make that square that's two by two. The square root of four is two because it's the length of the side of a square that's four square units, all right? And then my nine here, three, is the square root of nine, all right? Because I got a square that's nine square units, three is the side length, all right? I can make one more here. Hopefully it won't take me too long. Um, we're gonna make one that is four by four here. Okay, so there's a square that's four by four. 16 tiles there. The square root of 16 is four, side length. The length of the side of that square is its square root. Now, there's actually a perfect square that's smaller than that. It's one. One is a perfect square, because one times one is one. The square root of one is one. One of the, one of the two numbers that's uh, its own square root. One is its own square root, and actually, there's one here, it's a zero. Zero is a perfect square, because it's zero times zero. I realize there's nothing there, but zero is a perfect square. I could continue this on. The one I had on the staircase was 36. There's one in between there, there's 25, right? The one I talked about there as well. Any of the numbers in between these two, in between nine and 16 are not perfect squares, because you can't make a square out of that number of tiles. All right, let's look at that some more right now. All right, looking at those tiles, we had kind of looked at the first bunch of perfect squares here. We had these ones. We had 1, 4, 9, 16, 25. Maybe I can fit them all in here. I can't quite fit 36, so maybe I can make the page a bit bigger. 
there's those first six perfect squares. Uh, other than, as I said, this one up here that uh, zero is also a perfect square, but we'll leave that one for now. Let's just focus on this 36 for a minute. So let's get rid of all those other ones. 36 is a perfect square because it is 6 times 6. You have a whole number times itself gives you that number. You can also write that as 6 to the power of 2, which is commonly referred to as saying 6 squared. To the power of 2, they say 6 squared because when you take 6 and make a square of that side length, that's the number you get. 36 is 6 squared. Now, if you're going to write a definition of what a perfect square is, perfect square is a number that is the product of two equal factors. It's the product of a number times itself, like in this case, right? 6 and 6, two equal factors. Now, if you actually broke it down into its prime factors, it's 6 times 6, but you could actually write each of these as 2 times 3, 2 times 3. If you look at the prime factors there, 36 is 2 times 3 times 2 times 3. Or, in other words, if we put them in order, 2 times 2 times 3 times 3. A perfect square is going to have its prime factors occur in pairs. There's going to be an even number of each prime factor in a perfect square. Now, the reason for this is because, if you think about it, if you have two equal factors here, Whatever prime factors there are of the first one are going to be the same prime factors there. So you're always going to get a duplication there. So you're going to be able to arrange them in groups of two because there's going to be one from each side. Now let's look quickly at what happens if you have a number that is not a perfect square and what its factors look like. If you took a number uh, that you might get by getting rid of one of these. Let's say you didn't have the 2 here, and you only had 2 times 3 times 3. Well, that's 18. 18 is not a perfect square. Its factors don't appear in pairs. There's not an even number of each of them. All right, so that's one way you can tell that a number is a perfect square. If you know its prime factors, look at whether they occur in pairs. Right, like if you have a number like 196. Let's make some more space here if we can. Okay, number like 196. Is this a perfect square? Well, if we want to find out one way again, it's just to look at its prime factors. If you break this down, start by dividing, trying to divide it by 2 here. You get 98. I can divide it by 2 again. You get 49. A little more space. Now, I can't divide it by 2. Can't divide it by 3. Can't divide it by 5. But you can, of course, divide it by 7. And you can divide it by 7 one more time. Here's its prime factors right here. There's the prime factors of 196. So we can write 196 is 2 times 2 times 7 times 7. You have pairs of prime factors, right? There's a pair of 2's, there's a pair of 7's. So it's a perfect square. And if I arrange them the other way, if I put one of each of those pairs on either side, and I put the 7 over there and the other 7 over there, well, lo and behold, this is 14 and this is 14. All right, 196 is 14 times 14. 14 is the square root of 196. If we draw a square that is 196 squares, we have to make it 14 by 14. Now let's do that right now. Make some space, keep that at the top. So let's see if I can fit it in here. There's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14. I think that was it. All right. If we have 14 here and 14 here, right, let's say those are centimeters. They're probably not centimeters on your screen, but that area in there would be 196 centimeters squared. 
Okay, because 14 squared is 196. Now you could turn it around and uh, say it the other way. You can say 14 is the square root of 196. Okay, square root. Now if you want a definition of square root, it's a number that when multiplied by itself gives you your number. Now there's a symbol you should learn for square root that we're going to look at right now. And you may have seen it on calculator. Most scientific calculators have it. It's this symbol right here. The square root of 196 is 14. That's what that symbol means. This means the square root of. Right now, we had our numbers before. Uh, we had our perfect squares that we had 1, 4, 9, 16, 25. We could say the square root of each of those, right? Square root of 1 was 1. Square root of 4 was 2. Square root of 9 was 3. Square root of 16 is 4 and so on, right? Square root of 25 is 5. Okay, that, that symbol, it's a funny looking symbol. It actually uh, was first used in the 1500s. Uh, first used by a guy named Christoph Rudolph. It looks like, uh, or it's thought that it's because it looks like a lowercase r, that symbol, when it's written like that. There's not really any proof of that, but... That's the thinking. All right, so that's the square root symbol. And that is one way you can find square roots by looking at prime factors and whether they occur in pairs or not. Now, of course, the other way is just using a calculator, which you likely already know how to do, or you can probably figure it out. But while we're going to look at this calculator right here, and it's hard to see the square root button, it's that little kind of check mark looking symbol. If we now do square root of 196, we're going to get 14, right? Now that's a pretty straight, easy way to get it, right? Now on that same key, on this calculator, is a squared button. If I do 14 and I square it, I get 196. Those two operations, those two buttons, they perform inverse operations. Square root and squaring are inverse operations. If you take any number here, if you take 24 and I square that number, I get some much bigger number. And then if I take the square root of that number, 576, I'm going to get 24. Now I started a list here of square roots of perfect squares. You could continue that list and I think that'd be a good idea for you to do. Continue this list down. Now you likely know it to, to 12 probably. People when they learn their times tables know that. But it wouldn't hurt to go a bit further than that. Say even up to 25 on this side if you wanted to. As those numbers come up, start to, start to learn them and use them. All right, so that is squares and square roots. Perfect squares and square roots of those perfect squares.